welcome to Global Connections. I'm Patrick Bratton here with you on Think Tech TV. Today we've got a special guest with us today, Dr. Russell Hart at Hawaii Pacific University, who's going to be telling us about some interesting programs he's been managing, working about World War II in the Pacific and Hawaii. Without further ado, welcome to Think Tech. Patrick, it's great to be here again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, you are, you've been here before talking about myths of World War II last year, I believe. I was here last year talking about the myths of World War II, and uh, yes, those myths still persist this year. So. Interesting. I mean, one of the things that you've been uh, running this past summer, you just got done with, is the specific academy uh, that you've been working at, I believe, with the National World War II Museum. Uh, what, I mean, what is the Pacific Academy? I mean, what's, what's, what's the, the title entail? What's, what's this program about? Yes, so um, uh, intensive uh, learning programs are something that I've had an interest in for uh, a number of years now. I've done a, a few in the past. And uh, the Pacific Academy is essentially was a one month long intensive learning program uh, uh, based here at our uh, Hawaii Pacific University's Lower Tower Marketplace, our new facility. And um, we brought in uh, 20 students from the mainland and some HPU students for a month long academic program focused on World War II in the Pacific. And uh, we partnered with the National World War II Museum in New Orleans. Um, uh, they have um, uh, one of their missions is to is to uh, expose uh, younger generations to uh, uh, the Second World War and the le lessons and legacies of those of that conflict, and they do academic programming around the world in Europe in, in the Pacific, and so they're a natural partner for Hawaii Pacific University to to, to work with on on the Pacific Academy this summer. Interesting. Uh, how long has the World War II Museum been around? Uh, it's been a, 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 around. It was a national D-Day museum. It was, found, it was founded as in the 1990s. And then uh, uh, in recent years, it has expanded its mission uh, to focus on, on the whole of the Second World War. Uh, they have a wonderful museum in New Orleans. Uh, that uh, if you're in, this, in that lovely city, I would encourage you to go to go visit. Uh, and they've really been uh, building out their academic programs uh, in the Pacific Theater uh, in recent recent years. So uh, they'll be back here in December for the 75th anniversary of Pearl Harbor, doing a major tour and academic symposium that uh, Hawaii Pacific University will be uh, involved with as well. Um, so the, the partnership with the National World War II Museum was a, was a, uh, makes a lot of sense for Hawaii Pacific University and for our mission to educate uh, local and national and international students, uh, international uh, educational experience here in, in, the, in the heart of the, of, uh, of the Pacific. I have to ask an obvious question, but I'll, I'll ask it anyways. Um, I mean, so, you know, why Hawaii, in a sense? I mean, this is, New Orleans is very far uh -huh. away, right? Uh -huh. Well, I mean, obviously, if you want to learn something about the Second World War uh, in Asia Pacific, um, Hawaii is the place to go. I mean, this is the center. This is the place where on the 7th of December, 1941, the Empire of Japan attacked uh, attacked the United States with a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor and did a devastating, devastating blow to the U.S. 7th Fleet base based here. And so uh, Hawaii has such a rich uh, military history, such a deep connection to war and conflict, and the state and its, and its evolution has been pr profoundly shaped by the Second World War. So if you want to study and understand the Second World War, uh, you want to learn something about Hawaii's experience and uh, the consequences, the legacies of that. You've got to come to you've got to come to Oahu and uh, and uh, and see it firsthand and experience it firsthand. Uh, you know, it's one thing to read about a conflict uh, in textbooks and study it, but you know, experiential learning really is profoundly influential. And there's nothing nothing more valuable uh, in explaining. This, this conflict to, to young people than actually taking them to some of these major, major battlefield sites and conflict sites and, and really exposing them to, to that experience is very meaningful. 
One thing that you mentioned earlier about the mission of the World War II Museum is, to, again, in a sense, to, to teach a new generations about the history and the importance of the war. I mean, one, one shift that I've seen, I want to ask you if you've seen this similar shift, is for the probably the last couple of generations, our generation, the generation before, um, World War II and the memory of the war was, was very present, whether it was through family members and then all throughout from the 60s to the 80s, there's a whole slew of movies, good, and uh, not so good and, and, <laughs> and, and ugly and ugly about yeah. World War II that we kind of grew up with and you know maybe perhaps same as me you were as a kid as a young boy building little models of B-17s and Tiger tanks and other things like that I mean do you find now that as that generation is you know passing away and you know we don't see perhaps as many war movies or these types of things people are playing video games or whatever um, do you find that with this newer generation of millennials and stuff that they're perhaps much farther away from World War II than most people think oh yeah I mean I think there's um, some truth to that I mean I mean obviously the hi the history of the Second World War has been very influential uh, for post-war generations obviously during the Cold War the legacy and memory of the war very significantly uh, shaped uh, and contextualized the Cold War conflict um, uh, and obviously now, today, one of the reasons for doing a, a program like this is, is entirely because the, the generation that participated in the Second World War are, are, are passing away at an accelerating rate. And um, we want to make sure that we, we capture that memory and preserve that memory before it's, before it's lost. Uh, I think youngsters today, therefore, tend to know less about the Second World War than earlier generations, but I also think their interest in learning and understanding about the Second World War uh, is as strong as ever, and uh, that's one of the things that we we sought to capitalize on in, with this program. You know, and just a couple of examples: we had a couple of students from Ohio um, who, you know, they work weekend and Saturday jobs at, at Kentucky Fried Chicken. They've been saving up for some several of them for two or three years. Huh? to participate in a program like this. When this came along, they, they jumped on it. This is exactly what they want, wanted to do. So I think there is an interest. Um, you know, a lot of young people still have uh, uh, relatives, grandparents, uh, friends of friends who still have some connection with the war and some recollection of, of the war. And I think there is that, still that interest to, to, to learn. And obviously, in the last uh, decade or so, with some big um, centenaries, the 75th centenary coming up, uh, 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 that there's been renewed interest and there's been more movies and more documentaries which, you know, that which simulate uh, in interest. So I think the interest is there, uh, a desire to learn, and I think it's important for professional uh, academics like myself as a historian uh, is to ensure that we preserve that legacy as accurately as possible and, and convey it to future generations, that's a very important thing to do because obviously um, a national history can be used to great, to great good and also to uh, not so good purposes. So it's important that uh, we, we try to preserve and pass on that, that, historical, that historical record. Mm. Interesting. So idea here, we've got a bunch of students. Uh, you're going to collaborate between two institutions, bring those students you know, to Hawaii, so I mean, that kind of leads to a couple of different questions. I mean, you know, what kind of students, where are they from? And then leading off of that, you know, what are they going to do? Uh, what did they do in this case uh, here in Hawaii? Yeah, so the, um, so the museum brought us uh, students from the mainland. Uh, they recruited them, they vetted them, they went through an application process, and they were selected for participation. They came from all over the, all over the mainland. Um, they're undergraduate students, uh, most of them are uh, uh, sophomores and juniors, um, a couple of freshmen, a couple of, se of seniors. Uh, they're all working on their college degrees back on the mainland and they came to participate in the Pacific Academy uh, and to, to get that s uh, summer special credit uh, and count that towards their, their uh, respective degrees at the, at the host institutions. Um, and I think the thing that, uh, that uh, the common denominator uh, was their interest in learning about mm. the Second World War. So they came from all over the U.S. Uh, I, uh, obviously, I got to know them during the month they were here and talked to them. And you know, a lot of them have connections to the war. They have 
relatives that uh, either fought in the war have, or have reminiscences of, of their wartime experiences that have been passed down from generation to generation. So they have that, 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 that curiosity to, to, to study and learn about, about the Second World War. I mean, and obviously, you know, Hawaii is an attractive place for mainlanders to come. Most of them had, had never been to hmm. Hawaii before, so they certainly enjoyed the climate and, the, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, off time going to, going to the beach and exploring the wonderful nature of Oahu. Um, but, you know, the program was focused on their academic study and, uh, yeah, they really came uh, committed, committed to learning. Uh, we offered a variety of courses for them. Uh, we had two seminars on the Second World War itself. We had one focused on the Second World War in Europe, which uh, I was the, the, the team and the lead instructor on. Uh, these were all team talk classes that we offered. Uh, we had a seminar on the Second World War in the, in the Pacific, and then we had additional uh, courses to help contextualize, contextualize those seminar courses. So. Um, Asia Pacific uh, Maritime Relations. We had a course on the military history of Hawaii, which you know, uh, Hawaii Pacific University uh, created some years ago. And we're still uh, the only institution in the world that offers a course focused exclusively on studying and learning about the military history of Hawaii. So, uh, something I I helped to create uh, some years ago. Um, it's a very distinctive and unique unique course um, that only that only students can get at Hawaii Pacific. Interesting. I mean, one of the things uh, I always find kind of uh, surprising is that people, or I shouldn't find it surprising, I should say, but I mean, it's interesting you've got perhaps uh, a mixture of sort of preconception ideas or perhaps stereotypes. Uh, one, of what people not from Hawaii might have about Hawaii, but also what people might have about the Second World War. I mean, are there a couple of things that you found to be of interest, you know, kind of this kind of melange, if you will, of uh, perceptions or preconceived ideas that then you were able to work with or educate uh, during the program? Yeah, well, I think it's, I mean, uh, if you look at the students and you talk to the students and you listen to them in class, I mean, clearly um, films play a very important role. It's, you know, it always strikes me how frequently a student will say, well, that's not right because <laughs> I saw it in this movie and in this right. movie it was, it was this way around. And, and so, you know, media plays a very, very important role in, in creating general perceptions amongst the general public. So, you know, movies are very, very influential. Um, Any particular movies? Good or bad? Uh, <laughs> well, so I think of ones that were, that, that were I mean, obviously ones, you know, the great classics like, like D-Day, uh, A Bridge Too Far. These are, these, you know, these are the ones that students, students, uh, you know, uh, talk about and, you know, their views are shaped, are shaped by them. You know, the media is a very powerful instrument in shaping young, in shaping young minds and um, always mindful of that. So there were, there were certainly work occasions in class where we had to stop and discuss and dis dispel some of those 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 uh, popular images I mean you know, popular perceptions of, of the conflict which are deeply ingrained in in public consciousness and gets and get passed from generation to generation in a variety of, of media which of films are just one uh, one one of them so it's always interesting uh, 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 you know ad addressing that and and uh, you know, I, I like to you know I like to challenge those perceptions and uh, and uh, and to dismantle them. It's always fun to do that. And students say, "What? That's wrong. My view is wrong. Why?" And then you know, so I like to bring to the classroom you know my knowledge, my expertise, and share with them you know more recent academic uh, scholarship, which have delved down to many of many of these areas in more detail, and and uh, can give uh, more accurate framing for for the pers perspectives of young of young minds so um, you know and that's what that's what we try to do we try to create a program at the end of the day the students left having a greater understanding of the second world war having a greater understanding of Hawaii's place in that con conflict and a better understanding of the, of the legacies of that conflict for Hawaii for the United States and for, and for the entire world and I, I, I think I, I think we succeeded I, uh, I really do you know, we talked to the students uh, during the program and at the end, and I've been in contact with some of them since. Uh, a few of them keep uh, messaging me on Facebook. Um, they're so still excited, and whatever they write me and say, I, I really miss Hawaii, I really miss the program. And um, yeah, and then they've, uh, they've been applying the knowledge. A couple of them have already gone back to their home schools and have done things. 
um, uh, that clearly were applying things that they learned they learned in in Hawaii, even things that, you know cultural, like you know, the importance of aloha mm. in a Hawaiian society. One of them is been posting on Facebook and and saying to people, you know, you you're not responding here with aloha, and like this is cultural mm. cultural knowledge learned and transferred and applied in a in a different cultural context, and that's you know that's that's great when when students uh, students mm. do that. So you know, and young minds are, are much more malleable than us older, more mature minds. Inflexible, are more inflexible, <laughs> fixed in our fixed in our ways. But you know, young minds are, are the they're, you know, they're an open book, they, uh, or a sieve, they, they suck in knowledge and some of it sticks, some of it sticks and, and is retained, so. Okay, uh, on that note, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back with you in just a minute. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Law Across the Sea. Please join me every other Monday to hear lawyers from Hawaii discussing ways to reach across the sea and help people and bring people together. Aloha. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage, which is on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock here on Think Tech. On Center Stage, I talk with artists about not only what they do and how they do it, but the meat of the conversation for me is why they do it, why we go through this. A lot of us are not making our livings doing this, and a lot of us would do this with our last dying breath if we had that choice. And that's what I love to talk to people about. I hope you enjoy watching it, and I hope you get inspired because there's an artist inside you too. Join us on Center Stage at 2 o'clock on Wednesdays. Bye. Hello, welcome back to Global Connections. I'm Patrick Bratton. I'm here talking with Russell Hart about the Pacific Academy, a program that HPU linked up with the National World War II Museum in New Orleans to, talk, to bring students to Hawaii to learn about the history of both World War II and then wider uh, trends about war and society and politics and history in the Asia Pacific region. Um, before the break, you were giving us sort of an outline about the student body that came to this program, the academic program, the structure. I mean, but one of the things that I, I think I'm always struck about you as an educator, as an education, educational professional, professional is that um, I mean there's book there's quote unquote book learning on one side right stuff that you do in the classroom and you get so sort of traditional but there's also this impact um, that you stress about sort of experiential learning and getting out and about and seeing history for yourself in a more tactile sense um, so what are some of the things that you've done uh, with the program or did with the program uh, in terms of sites ways of integrating the classes that you guys were doing yeah, well, I think, you know, experiential learning is fundamental to reinforcing classroom book, traditional book, book learning. Um, uh, and um, so built into the Pacific Academy f uh, was, uh, was, were field trips each week in the four-week program. We went on a field trip. Uh, we went out to the uh, USS Arizona. Uh, we went out to the Bofin uh, Submarine Museum. We, we went to the USS Missouri. Uh, we went up to Punchbowl National Cemetery. Uh, we went to the Pacific Aviation Museum. Uh, we went to Iolani Palace, and we had a downtown walking walking tour. So you know, we went to some uh, central sites that are the key sites for uh, you know, really immersing yourself in uh, and appreciating the impact of the of the Second World War on, on Hawaii. And uh, you know, those are the. the those are really fundamental in cementing classroom learning. Um, you read this, I mean, I did this you know, some years ago. I helped organize a study abroad program, went to Vietnam. You know, I've read a lot about the Vietnam, Vietnam War, studied a, lot of, a fair bit about it. I'm not an expert, but I know quite a lot. I've taught it. And, uh, you know, uh, we went to the Coochie Tunnels, and I was standing there. And you know, I knew intellectually that this was the most bombed place in human history. And, but until you stand in those craters and look, look across the river and, and see Saigon 400 meters away and you, and you realize that you know, we couldn't dislodge the Viet Cong from the doorstep of Saigon, then it really brings home to you uh, the tremendous challenge the United States faced in trying to win that conflict. And even though I'd read that in books, seeing it in person really brought that home in a way that reading it in the book simply can't 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 bring home, and so 
um, yeah, I've always been a big proponent of experiential learning. So we built this into the program. And uh, yeah, I mean, the students really had, you know, a, a, you know, a very, I think, often profound experience on, on some of the field trips. I mean, they came back sometimes somber. You go to the Arizona, it's a very somber ex experience. It really brings home to you the, the you know, the, the sacrifice that was required uh, uh, to, for victory in the Second World War. So, I mean, they really succeeded in, in reinforcing the student learning in the, in the program. Interesting. I mean, one of the things that I'm always kind of struck by is that you, you have a kind of a, a duality often uh, when people are, um, duality is personal, not the best word, but I'll, I'll roll with that. A duality when people look at war, and, and in the one sense, you, you tend to have people who get almost sort of the military history buff thing, you know, well, you know, the cannons on this aircraft were actually 20 millimeter, not 30 millimeter, and they really down in the weeds on, you yeah. know, snorkel designs and boot technology yeah. and that kind of stuff. And then you have this, which it's all there, the tactics, the campaigns, the sort of guns and trumpet history. But then there's also on the flip side, you also have this, you know, the, the sort of more general war in society about the effects that a war has on society. And I, I think that's also something, uh, you know, again, I think Hawaii would have a, a rich history for, you know, like for example, you know, we've the, the Judiciary Center that's downtown and they have a very good exhibit you know, on the history of martial law uh, during World War II, which is not, people think about Pearl Harbor, they think about the campaigns of the Pacific, but, you know, having martial law in Hawaii is, you know, it's a chapter, it's a very important part, a rather dark chapter in, in mm -hmm. World War II history, but it's something that's often sort of overlooked. I mean, is that also something that you sort of utilized in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the academy? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, war, at, at the end of the day, if you studying military history, studying conflict, is about studying the relationship between war and society. Um, you know, societies go to war, societies are impacted by war, and you know, I can have conversations with students about whether it's a 20 millimeter or 23 mi millimeter cannon, whatever, I can have those conversations. But the much more important conversations to have is to get students thinking about the consequences and the ramifications of conflict. Conflict is a horrendous thing. Conflict is a terrible thing. As a military historian, you know, I abhor war and uh, I study it because to study and understand it is to help prevent it from happening. It's ignorant people who advocate going, going to war. Um, and so, you know, you can take those students that have an interest, uh, enthusiast interest in military history, a uh, buff interest, and you can translate that into a broader understanding of the much larger, much more significant implications of, of conflict. And uh, so we did this in, in the Pacific Academy in a variety of ways. And the, and the, uh, the Judiciary Center's martial law exhibit is, is probably the best example of that. You know, Hawaii underwent martial law um, it was the only, about the only place in the United States that was under direct martial, martial law, and that had a very significant impact on civil military relations in the state of, of, of the territory of Hawaii, subsequently the state of Hawaii. It really helped to condition those long-standing complex relationships between uh, local civil society uh, and the U.S. military here to, to today. Um, it saw some very significant um, reductions uh, in the civil liberties of, of people li living, living here. Uh, the internment uh, of Japanese Americans and other alien, alien nationals, but primarily Japanese Americans. The uh, tr transshipment of some of those to internment camps on, on the mainland. Um, the relationship between the local police and the military mm. in the war was one of great complexity and sometimes tremendous tension. Um, it's kind of embo embodiment of that, of that friction between military control and civil, civil authority that was going to be there long after, long after the conflict ended. So it's, a fas it's fascinating. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, we live in a world where we're all so busy that few of us actually stop to think about how we got to where we are today and the way the thing, things are. And studying the Second World War tells us a lot about, you know, things that are very common here. It strikes people as odd, you know. A lot of the number of the mainland students were, why is spam so important? Why do we, <laughs> why do, why is there spam, shelves and shelves of spam? I said, well, this is, you know, spam became a common staple as a consequence of the Second World War. Yep, throughout the Pacific. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, throughout the Pacific. It had to be imported here. 
uh, and became a staple in, in, in the local culinary uh, uh, taste. And that, the Second World War, it's a consequence of the Second World War. Uh, so in all kinds of ways, uh, we, we, we uh, try to instill in, in students understanding of those broader societal uh, ramifications of studying the Second World War. And we're not here just to study the, whether the cannon was 20 or 23 millimeters, <laughs> although you know, we, we did that in passing, but much more importantly was understanding about war, understanding about conflict, what a terrible thing it is, what a tragedy it is. Uh, once you engage in conflict, you open a Pandora's box, that is, the outcome is very difficult to predict and very, very difficult to control. Um, and this, is, this has tremendous repercussions for individuals, for families, for communities, uh, for countries, and for the whole, whole world. So we try to expose students to some of those broader implications and ramifications of, of the Second World War here and a place where uh, the society that has been significantly impacted by that conflict, certainly more impacted than many places in the United States. One of the things um, to kind of go off the, uh, the, the, the point that you raised I think is interesting is Honolulu and Hawaii in general, but Honolulu in specific, it's a very good uh, location to do that. I do these walking tours often for students and you know the students walk around downtown, they walk by buildings, they walk by area, they don't, okay, they, they know there's a Starbucks there, or that's the library or whatever, uh, but so oftentimes you can sit there and say, hey, well, you know, this building was built by this person for these purposes and it reflects this larger issue, whether it's the Big Five, whether it's threats of invasions in the 19th century, whatever it might be. And for example, like, you know, walking by the state capitol, you know, you've got the Korean and Vietnam War memorials that probably 80% of the people right. walking around downtown have yeah. never seen. Uh, take the students there, and then, again, it opens up uh, a sort of window into the past and shows them an area and a place they might they would probably walk by. I mean, I, I think in a sense, I mean, is that something also that you noticed? Oh, I, I absolutely. I mean, you know, there's so much of our the world that we live in that we really don't see. We, we go all past it, we drive past it, we're busy, we, we just don't pay attention, it's there, what is it we don't know, we don't really care. And uh, you know, I think that's a, a, a just unfortunately a characteristic of, of contemporary society, which is very progressive and forward looking, and we don't really stop to, to take a look at, uh, at the past or how we got to where we are we are today. So, um, yeah, of, of the experiences, I think, I mean, the downtown walking tour was very one that very interesting and stimulating for the students. Uh, I, but I think the, the punch ball going mm. to the National Cemetery really uh, was probably the most, the, the most influential uh, experience talking about. To actually see, you know, the, the sacrifice, you know, before your eyes. It's very easy, and we can read numbers to them, you know, 35 million people killed, blah, 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 blah. And, but, you know, until you stand there and you see graves and you see that you know some of those graves are still tended people loved ones are still bringing flowers and put, placing them on those graves it really brings home the profound sacrifice and, and cost and tragedy of, of conflict so that's you know I think that's very meaningful and, and, uh, uh, and poignant for them yeah. well thank you very much for coming and sharing about this program with us Russell it's been a pleasure to be here thank you Patrick Welcome. All right, I'm Patrick Bratton closing out uh, Global Connections for today, and I will see you guys next week. <laughs>